In this video, I'm going to be giving you tips on shooting 360 travel videos. Everything from how to shoot your footage, the best accessories, as well as tips on capturing unique and creative looking angles. It's coming up. Hey everyone, Steve here from Learn Online Video. And today we're talking all about how to capture creative and unique looking travel videos using a 360 camera. Now, I recently flew out to Stockholm, Sweden for the Epidemic Sound Creator Summit, and this was my first YouTube networking event. I was really looking forward to exploring the city and meeting creators from all over the world. But I didn't want to be the guy staring through the lens of a camera the whole time. I didn't want a camera strapped around my neck. I didn't want to have to think about things like framing, composition, focus, exposure, but I did want to document the trip. And this is where a 360 camera comes in. These things are small, discreet, easy to travel with and make capturing your footage incredibly easy. So let me share with you some tips to help with your own travel videos when using a 360 camera. Now the camera I used on this trip was the Insta360 X3. This one's great because it shoots in 5.7K and it's got a nice big screen so you can easily change all the camera settings without having to connect it to your phone. Now you might already have a 360 camera or you might be looking to get one. If that's the case I will link some recommendations in the description below. Now there are four accessories which I think are almost crucial when it comes to shooting 360 travel videos. Number one, the invisible selfie stick. This will be magically erased from your shot and is great for capturing both yourself and your location. Number two, a mini tripod. This will steadily hold both your camera and your invisible selfie stick, comes in really useful. Number three, a suction mount. This will allow you to attach your camera to just about any flat surface. And finally, number four, a clamp for whenever you can't find a nice flat surface to attach your camera to. Now, how you shoot your travel video and the footage you capture is entirely up to you. Do what works best for the story that you're trying to tell. For me, I wanted to capture shots not only of my destination, but also my journey to that destination. You could, for example, capture a POV shot whilst you pack your suitcase, or you could capture a time lapse as you drive to the airport. Now, the invisible selfie stick comes in very useful at the airport because it's easy to carry with your luggage and folds down nice and small when not in use. It also allows you to capture shots as you walk through the airport from multiple different angles, and this gives you a good variety of footage to work with in the edit. Also, try getting creative with your shots and angles. I clamped my camera to the bottom of my suitcase for this shot and sent it around the conveyor belt for this shot. Now, once you've boarded the plane and taken your seat, don't feel like there's no longer anything to shoot because there is literally a whole window of opportunity to take advantage of. This is where the suction mount comes in really useful. Try shooting in time-lapse mode as the plane takes off. This is a great way of adding more pace to your travel videos. If time-lapses aren't your thing, then try shooting in real time. Also, experiment with your framing in the edit. The beauty of shooting in 360 is that you can point the camera wherever you like. You could point it towards you, you could zoom right out and get really creative, or you could turn the camera facing out the window. The possibility are endless. Now this 360 camera comes with an app that has a ton of features and effects which makes shooting and editing your footage much easier. For example, this shot here was captured by me simply walking around the airport. I just selected the cine lapse feature in the app and the editing software did all the rest. I was also able to edit this on my phone whilst at the airport. So when you combine the 360 camera with the app, you get the ultimate power combo when it comes to travel videos. Now when I arrived in Stockholm, I really wanted to explore the city and in Stockholm there really isn't any better way to explore the city than on an electric scooter and this is where the 360 camera really came to life. And what I love most about shooting in 360 is that the camera is shooting in every single direction so you don't need to think about your framing or your composition whilst filming. You can enjoy whatever it is that you're doing and then reframe all of your footage later in the edit. There are an infinite amount of shots that you can get when shooting in 360. As an example here is the exact same shot edited 3D different ways. Edit number one, facing forward, camera locked off, nice and simple, similar to what you might capture using a more traditional camera. Edit number two, exact same shot, only this time we're going to tilt down as we push forward to reveal the road ahead. And edit number three, let's get much more creative with this one, consistent camera movement that creates a much more immersive experience. So quite often deciding the framing of your shot is the most difficult part because there's so many options. Also, don't always feel like your camera needs to be 
moving. You could place it still on a table during a meal, for example, and then get creative in the edit later. Now, whilst I was traveling in Sweden, I was trying to travel light. I didn't have my laptop with me, so I was editing everything on my phone. I used a feature on the Insta360 app called Auto Frame, which quickly and easily reframed my footage using AI. This is a great feature, especially for beginners who are new to editing. Editing 360 footage is made so much easier using the app because of all the effects that can be easily added. What used to take days, weeks of editing on a computer now literally takes seconds on a phone. This sky replacement effect, for example, would take a huge amount of time back in the day, but now with just one tap of a button, voila. Also, audio is really important when it comes to video. I find the internal microphones on these 360 cameras okay for atmospheric sounds, but if you really wanna capture nice, clean, crisp, professional sound in audio, then I recommend getting an external microphone. I use the Rode Wireless Go. This is perfect if you plan on vlogging or talking to the camera, as you can get the microphone nice and close to your subject. As an example, the audio that you're hearing now is coming directly from the camera's internal microphone. It's okay, it's not too bad, but if we switch to the Rode Wireless Go, we now have much cleaner, crisper, professional sounding audio. So if you're planning on talking or vlogging whilst on your travels, then definitely consider investing in a wireless microphone. If you don't want your microphone to be seen in the shot, then Insta360 do this invisible mic bracket, which will make your audio setup completely invisible. Also, quick heads up here, guys. The lenses on a 360 camera are much more likely to scratch compared to a more traditional lens. This is a traditional lens, flat, sits nice and flush. You still need to be careful, but you could put it face down and it will probably be okay. A 360 lens, on the other hand, sticks out like this, so it's much more prone to being scratched. I've got a little crash helmet for mine, this just goes on the top like that, and this keeps it nice and safe when not in use. Also, if you're looking for more control over your edit and a higher resolution export, then this is where the Studio app comes in. I use this when editing on a laptop as I can create much more technical and precise camera movements. The app is a great quick on the move way to edit your footage and the Studio app on a computer is better when editing bigger projects. This tutorial here, for example, the video that you're watching right now, I edited my 360 footage on the Studio app here on my laptop and then imported it into my editing software for the final edit. So look, I feel like we're just scratching the surface of 360 travel videos here, but hopefully this has given you a few ideas for your own travel videos. If you'd like to learn more about shooting in 360, then be sure to check out this video here where I share with you 10 things you need to know before shooting 360 video. But that's it from me. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.